Tonight, each of our stars is dancing to remember their most memorable years. So far, Nastia and Derek are safe. And Lana has been pretty memorable already, <laughs> too. Already huh? yeah. Michael and Peter, Riker and Allison, and Robert and Kim are on the walkway. <laughs> Let's tell them some results. The next couple who is safe is... Robert and Kim! You're safe? You're safe, oh. yes. Riker and Allison. You're in jeopardy. Michael and Peta. You are also in jeopardy. And uh, not to add any, but you're dancing next. Uh, yeah. So our football player's most memorable year involves a major turning point in his life and one relationship in particular. My most memorable year was a life-changing year for me. A lot of positive stuff happened that year, but also a lot of sad things. When I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. My oldest brother was killed by a gunshot, and that was very hard for my, our family. And I just remember a lot of fights between my mom and, and my dad. Then one day, my dad just left, and he, we were on our own. Our family kind of completely fell apart. He just wasn't there as a father, when, especially when I needed him most. While I was in college, I decided to give my dad a second chance. And it was nice to see my, finally my dad, you know, being a part of my life. What have you come here today to tell us? Came to tell the world that I'm an openly proud gay man. When I first came out, it was all over the press. What people don't know, it cost me my relationship with my father. I told my dad that I was gay, and he pretty much told the New York Times that he was ashamed of me being gay. He said he didn't want his grandkids to be raised in that type of environment. When I read that, and um, I was I was hurt. I, I called him. And I said, you, you lost another son again by what you said. And, um, and I haven't talked to him since. This week is your week. Yeah. It has to be your comeback week. And I know that you can pull this off because this song means so much to you. So you need to dance from your heart. Everyone needs to see that, especially the judges. This week I'm dancing to rumba to I'm Not My Father's Son. The story of the dance is about the journey of my relationship with my father. It's going to be you in a spotlight here, in your own thoughts. It's all about you. It shows that I'm sad right now, but by the end of the song, I'm going to be strong and I'm going to make it. There's light at the end of the tunnel and I'm walking straight to that light.
to Lentita. A lot of emotion for these uh, stars and our dancers tonight. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I got so much emotion right now. I'm back. I'm back. All right, let's give you a breather. I'll hear from the judges. Julianne? I love this stage of the competition because this is when it gets real, and this is when you have to improve each week to get there. And what you did tonight was become so vulnerable and so trusting with PETA that I haven't seen. This was so beautiful. And your footwork, you were pointing your toes, you were doing your cucaracha, your hips were going crazy. <laughs> and your lines. Um, but the, the, breath, the breath that you had right at the beginning, that was the start. That was it. You did it. That was awesome. Well done. I'm, uh, listen, you should be very proud of yourself. It takes an enormous amount of guts to stand for what you believe in and making a stand in the world. Your voice is very important and I, I guarantee you it has helped a lot of people. So all that struggle is worth it. And your dancing tonight, my darling, was the best you've ever done. Dance is so much more than just movement. And what makes me so happy is that tonight you understood why all of us dance. You were truly dancing your soul for us, sharing a moment of your inside that we normally can't see, and it was breathtaking. I do want to say one little thing because it is fourth at a competition. Sometimes your posture, you're very strong, so just, you're very strong. And there was a very powerful dance, so just try to reel it in just a little. You don't need that much strength. But that was really beautiful. Thank you. All right. Well, well you, you mentioned about a tunnel, and I always think of Dancing with the Stars, the journey is a bit like a tunnel, and, and, and you're traveling along trying to get to the final, and you go into tunnels, and it, you know, you don't do too well. But tonight, for me, last week maybe you were in a tunnel. Tonight you came out, and you're in the light. There you go. We'll see what that means in scores in a minute. Head on up to the skybox. It's our most memorable night competition. Right now, our DWTS All Access hosts are chatting with Bachelor Chris and his fiance Whitney. Check them out. Gethin and Emma on ABC.com. Aaron? What? We're 25 minutes in and we're all crying. Goodness. We knew it was going to be an emotional night. Wonderful praise from the judges, and I echo what they say and thankful for what they said. I love Julianne saying, you did it. And Carrie Ann mentioning sharing your soul. What did sharing your soul tonight through that performance mean to you? He just said, just open and own the night. It's all about, you know, this song, this dance, this moment. And I told her I was going to give her everything I had this week, and I think I did. did. <laughs> yes, yeah. let's get your scores. Carrie Ann Inaba. Len Goodman. Seven. Julianne Huff. Eight. Bruno Tonio. Eight. Two eights there. Wonderful. 30 out of 40 for Michael and Peta. We don't know who's going home at the end of tonight's show. If Michael and Peta are safe, they'll need you to vote for them. So get to it, Tom. All right, Aaron. Thanks. And I felt guilty saying you're in jeopardy and you're dancing next. They handled that exceptionally well. Last week... Our pop star tied for the top of the leaderboard tonight. He is in jeopardy. When we come back, Riker and Allison dance to remember his most memorable year live.